Hey there and welcome to another Dave Does video and today we're doing a comparison video where we are comparison did one band rip off another band so you've know, seen in the title uh, we are checking out In Excess's uh, Good Times with Jimmy Barnes singing as well versus uh, Running for the Red Light by Meatloaf now actually the In Excess Good Times was actually a cover of the Easy Beat so I know that someone's going to put that in the comments uh, what if you've already typed in the comment <laughs> I knew someone would do it before they even got this far. Uh, so yeah, I, and I have checked out the Easy Beats, but I thought we'd do this version of it because it's a better song, to be honest. The Easy Beat ones from its time uh, it's, it just doesn't have the production value of this, and I think this is a great version of it. There are a few other versions I had, another later version with Jimmy Barnes in it, uh, which was cool, but I think this just had the, the In Excess version was great. And of course, it was from the Lost Boys soundtrack, which is awesome as well. Uh, now, I did notice when I was looking in at Running for the Red Light that they call it, I'm just going to type it in again. Uh, sorry, I've just suddenly realised I should have typed this in uh, on the screen. But Running for the Red Light, duh, 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 there we go. Uh, was, they do, they said they borrowed, is it Interpolation? That was it. The song contains Interpolation from the Good Times. And this is basically a, a what they, so what does interpolation mean? Well, according to them, it refers to using a melody or portions of a melody from a previously recorded song, but re-recording the med melody instead of sampling it. It is often used when the artist or label who owns the piece of music declines to license the sample or if the licensing of the piece of music is considered too costly. So basically they've nicked the melody and decided to re-record it rather than sample it. So they're saying they, they're gonna change it. But did they change it enough? Because what I remember the first time I heard it, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Does, is Meatloaf just ripping someone off here? Or did maybe some maybe this is an early Meatloaf song and uh, in excess had ripped them off. But we're gonna go find this one out. Now I'm gonna do a very quick blurb because I've just talked quite a lot at the beginning. Uh, would you like to win yourself a guitar? You can win a guitar just like this for just five pounds on the raffle. Uh, I'll be building either a Telecaster, a Let's Paul or a Stratocaster caster which will then be engraved with icons of your choosing i've got people like pantera and other band members and stuff like that engraved on mine but for five pounds you will get the chance to win it will go into a raffle one the person who wins will get to choose their own icons to be engraved and it will then get shipped out to wherever you are across the world so it should be a fun one to do and very low risk for just the fiber which will help fund the guitar and obviously shipping uh, right, if you like the video, please do subscribe, click the bell icon, like, share, leave the comments down below, get involved with the challenges, got the originals versus covers, kind of like this, uh, but also we have the greatest song ever challenge. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so via things like the Patreon, we have the priority sponsored video requests, we've got the Right in the Side Craft Shop, and of course Bandcamp for the band Nothing Gained. Now normally in these videos we will score these videos, but when this is not a scored video, we are not looking at these from hooks and uh melodies etc like apart from looking at the second song so we're looking at the first song as the original or a version of the original in this case uh and the follow-up song of did they nick the song outright or did they heavily borrow which is what they're claiming on this one the interpolation uh or is it more of a borrowed into i mean the fact that they've they've said interpolation on here uh means they already admit they've never denied it but i think we should just see how much did they actually borrow and so let's do this uh okay this is in excesses good time with jimmy bars i just love this track can it in three two one go <laughs> Everybody shame Everybody groove Everybody shame Great vocals, I love how they, they complement each other Mary, Mary, Great you're on well. my mind Chris Tone I'm sure you can see that they're miming in the studio, but it's still good fun. I 
love Jimmy Barnes' voice. I just love the front of the piano in there as well. I was going to do this as a freeway session with the original Easy Beats as well, but if you haven't heard the Easy Beats version, go check it out. Just a cool little party song. I don't know they had fun filming it. <laughs> well, I feel like they would have just literally just kept playing it on loop and just said, like, just piss around in the studio and we'll just keep filming it and we'll just cut it all together later and see how it all goes. That's what it kind of feels like they probably ended up doing. So, yeah, there we go. So that's In Excess's Good Times uh, with Jimmy Barnes. Great track. As I said, I've listened to another version of it, which was a more recent version of it with Jimmy Barnes, and it was cool. Uh... But it didn't have that kind of the in excess vibe to it. It was just another, it was more kind of country rock vibe. Um, I can't remember who the artist it was they were singing it with. But it was, yeah, I mean, it was very, very cool. Oh, uh, Keith Urban, that was it. Keith Urban, uh, there's another one on here which has had a million views from five years ago. Uh, I can't believe this one has only, this one hasn't had anywhere near as much. Oh, uh, 890,000 views. The one from Lost Boys has less than the one from Keith Urban. Fair enough. I mean, the Keith Urban one's cool. Uh, tells you about popular music. There you go. Uh, right, let's go check it out, though. Meat, meat Loaf and Running for the Red Lights. Let me just cue that up. So I've got it. So we're looking at the comparisons. So the comparisons aren't the same straight off, but you will obviously hear it when it kicks in. So I initially thought that the Meat Loaf version was before the NXS version. And I thought in excess of maybe it just ripped it off and it was done that particular way that it was uh, more of a homage because it was on the uh, soundtrack. Then obviously looked into it and found about the easy beats. But let's go and have a look at Running for the Red Light, I Got a Life by Meatloaf. Count it in. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> it's even got that kind of vibe. Slightly different key. And you can say, well, this is maybe not. It has got a definite rip off vibe to this, but. You could say well, this is a fairly standardised chord structure. Standard kind of R and rhythm and blues. This is different. I got the balls to break it. Gotta die the way 
esta tenga What a hard beat Lou feels about singing this song. I mean, those were so close to you. This, this song giant is number two in the charts. It's really like it was released in 1996 but didn't, didn't actually play it live until 2012. Okay, so that was running for the red light, and the question is, was that a rip-off? Now, in my opinion, interpolation or no, I think that's more than interpolation. That's more. That's pretty much a rip-off, because there's a few things in there. Yes, you've got the structure, and you've got the chord progression. The song is basically structured the same as Good Times. The fact that you've, you've got, gonna have a good time tonight, at the start of the chorus, when they're exactly the same as Good Times, he didn't have to sing that vocal line. He could have done it. Now, he might have just put it in there to say, look, we know that we're ripping off this other song, uh, and that's why we're doing it, so we're gonna, we're, we're not even going to try and cover it up. Uh, and maybe that's what they've done. Uh, but I would personally, if I was Easy Beats, go, nah, that's way, way too similar. Now, the problem is if it doesn't sell that much, they're probably not going to contest it. Uh, I don't know how much the album sold, but it's Meatloaf. It sold relatively well. Uh, but I would be, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like, when I remember first hearing it, it was on a compilation of like driving hits or rock and roll hits or something like that. And I'm just thinking, what the hell? I've heard this before. And it is a, it's a really cool rock and roll riff. Uh, the ban, a ban, a ram, ba 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 I mean, it's a real kind of, it's a cool riff. You could say it's been used in other songs as well, but nothing as blatant as following it. pretty much the exact same structure of Good Times. Uh, and it's, uh, it, the interpolation bit of following a melody is fine if you just want to nick a part of the melody, but they nick the whole freaking melody. Uh, there's more of good times in this than there is original content, in my opinion. But what do you think in the comments below? Do you think there is separation between the two songs or not? 
Uh, is it just a little bit of borrowing, or do you think this was a, a rip-off of the original version? In Excesses, we know is a cover, so we can accept that. We're going to use an Excesses version of the Easy Beat, because it's a better version than the Easy Beat's original one, in my opinion. If you're not sure, go check out the Easy Beat version of Good Times, uh, and do a comparison yourself. Now, if you like the video, please do subscribe, click the bell icon, like, share, leave the comments down below. That, of course, is how Dave does it.